I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Wrestling, where I review wrestling related things, all from the perspective of a fan, not an insider. So this last week was AEW and New Japan Pro Wrestling's Forbidden Door pay-per-view. A joint pay-per-view by two great companies. Let's get into it. The opening match, a trios match between the Jericho Appreciation Society's Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, New Japan affiliate Minoru Suzuki, versus Shota Umino, Wheelie Yuta, and Eddie Kingston. Whichever team won was going to give the man advantage at Blood and Guts to either the Jericho Appreciation Society or the Blackpool Combat Club with Eddie Kingston and Santana Ortiz. Because they're not one team. This match was freaking awesome. From the beginning to the start, it was just back and forth chaos. We didn't know who was going to win and who was going to get the man advantage. Not to mention the combatants, all great wrestlers. And you can see that on the part of the Jericho Appreciation Society when all three of them had somebody in a submission hold. A lot of high flyers in this match doing dives, of course. Even though Eddie Kingston himself isn't a high flyer, he did a dive. Everybody did a dive! Except Minoru Suzuki, who just kind of looked at everybody like they were stupid. And heck, even had a little tick for tap because back in Japan when Shota was still a young boy, Jericho put him and his father in the walls of Jericho. So to get him back, Shota put Jericho in the walls of Jericho. But after all the craziness and back and forth, it was a Judas Effect elbow onto Shota Umino that allowed Jericho to pin him and get the win for the Jericho Appreciation Society. Meaning at Blood and Guts, the Jericho Appreciation Society has the man advantage. And this match gets a 4 out of 5. <laughs> then the triple threat winner take all tag team match. Both the Ring of Honor and the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions were in this match. Whoever won this match was going to walk away with both titles. Even if it was the team that came in with no titles. Combatants of Rapongi Vice versus IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, United Empire, and the Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions, FTR. Some of the drama unfolding this match is that early in the match, FTR's Dax Harwood had to be taken to the back for an injury. Meaning that Cash Wheeler was by himself against two other teams. Luckily for Cash Wheeler though, his partner Dax Hardwood wasn't out for too long as he came back later with his arm taped up. Apparently he injured his shoulder. So many close calls in this match. Like really, I didn't know if the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships was going to go to New Japan. I didn't know if New Japan Championships were going to come to AEW. I didn't know if it was going to kind of be joint because as we know, Rocky Romero is with New Japan Pro Wrestling and Trent is with AEW. So it was just a big who knows. And it actually came very close to Rapongi Vice, the only team without tag team titles, becoming both champions but it was after that got broken up that FTR hit Rocky Romero with the big rig finisher and got the pin making FTR both the IWGP heavyweight tag team champions and the ring of honor champions meaning they have held tag team gold everywhere they've gone they are arguably the best tag team in wrestling right now and they are working their way up to being in the category of best tag team of all time we'll see as that goes but for right now this match got a five out of five Yee! And then the fatal four-way to decide the inaugural AEW All-Atlantic Championship. As we know, a new mid-card championship that makes you the champion of every country the Atlantic Ocean touches. And yes, the belt is gorgeous. The contestants, the first one being the last-minute replacement for Tomohiro Ishii, who got injured and was no longer able to be in this, Clark Connors versus Pac versus Malachi Black versus Miro. It's chaos, of course. Malachi spit black mist into somebody's eyes, of course. And it just kept being chaotic until Pac did a 450 splash onto Malachi Black while he had Clark Connors in a submission hold. And then while Malachi was hurt, Pac put Clark Connors in his Brutalizer submission hold and got the win, becoming the inaugural AEW All-Atlantic Champion. Which, good for Pac. He deserves it. He's been there since day one. And also good for him as this match was a 4 out of 5. Yee! Then another trios match. Dudes with Attitudes which I could swear is a tag team name I'd heard before. Sting and Darby Allen with Shingo Takagi versus the Bullet Club, the Young Bucks, and El Fantasmo. Although in the beginning, Sting didn't come out. At least not until the entire arena went black and it turned out he was up on the stage ready to dive down onto them. This match was really, really great. I was also very impressed with Sting, who, let's face it, since coming to AEW, most of his matches, he hasn't done all that much. He's, he's done his share, he's held the load, but definitely playing it safe with all of his injuries and the fact that he's gotten older. But in this one, he pulled out all the stops. All the classic Sting stuff. 
multiple stinger splashes, scorpion death locks, scorpion death drops. It was almost like watching Sting from back in the day. But it was Shingo Takagi who got the rest of the dragon finisher on El Phantasma, scoring the pin and the win, and getting this match a 4 out of 5. Yeah! And then for the AEW Women's World Championship, Tony Storm challenged champion Thunder Rosa. A really good match, but I will say they could have done a little bit better to build this up. They'd only built it up for a couple of weeks. Not to mention with the fact that Tony Storm hasn't been in AEW that long. We kind of know their track record with the stuff. They don't really give WWE defactors the title right off the bat. They make them wait a while. But it was a really good match. It was very competitive. And it showed the toughness on Tony Storm as a Thunder and Lightning did not put her out. It took Thunder Rosa doing the Reckoning, Dustin Rhodes finisher, of course Dustin Rhodes being one of her mentors, to put Tony Storm out and get her the win and retain her championship. And doing a really good match, but again, with just how predictable it was and the little lack of buildup, wouldn't make me like give this a 4 out of 5, but easily a very solid 3 out of 5. <laughs> then in my opinion, the match of the night for the IWGP United States Championship. AEW's Orange Cassidy challenging champion Will Ospreay. Even though he didn't have the belt because Juice Robinson won't give up the title because he wasn't able to defend it when Will Ospreay won it, therefore he's claiming that he's still the champion. But as far as this match, good lord what a match this was. It was so fast, so crazy, you didn't even want to blink because you might have missed something. Orange Cassidy did a great job in this match. Basically, Something we can show all the Orange Cassidy doubters that are saying he's just funny. He's not just funny. He's a fantastic wrestler. If you don't believe me, watch this match. Not to mention, of course, Will Ospreay, who's one of the best in the business right now, pulling out all the stops, pulling out pretty much every weapon in his arsenal he had. But it was a Stormbreaker by Will Ospreay that got him the pin on Orange Cassidy and retaining his title. And, like I said, getting this match a 5 out of 5. Yeah! Then after the match, the United Empire came out to beat up on Orange Cassidy, which caused Rapongi Vice to come out and help him, and even caused Kasuyuri Shibodai Te... I can't pronounce it. But he came out, and for the help, Orange Cassidy said, here, you can have my Ray-Bans. And then a match that, even though I would not say it was match of the night, was a fierce contender for match of the night. Zack Sabre Jr. came out, he was originally scheduled to fight Brian Danielson, but Brian Danielson is not medically cleared, and he promised us we would get a suitable replacement. Which, after months of waiting, was the debut of Claudio Castagnoli, the former Cesaro from WWE, who we've all been happy about left WWE because, let's just face it, no matter what, they were not going to utilize him like they should have. And when he came out, we thought he was going to end it early because he quickly got a neutralizer onto Zack Sabre Jr., but... Not to be the case. Zack Sabre Jr. kicked out. Which makes sense. Zack Sabre Jr. is like one of, if not the best technician in the game right now. This was a technician classic. Like, this was awesome. If you love technical wrestling, this is a match for you. And even with Zack Sabre Jr. pulling out all the submission holds, at one point twisting up Casting Noli like he was a pretzel, it was still a Ricola bomb from Casting Noli that got him the win. And this match, another 5 out of 5. Yeah! Then another Fatal 4-Way for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. Adam Cole versus Hangman Page versus Kazuchika Okada versus IWGP World Heavyweight Champion Jay White. Another great chaotic match. Every match tonight was just freaking chaos from start to finish. And even the way it ended with Okada having Adam Cole beat and down and then Switchblade running in to hit Okada with his Blade Runner finisher and then steal his pin by pinning Adam Cole. I always love stuff like that because that's such a drama-filled thing and it fuels a rivalry. And let's face it, every time the Rainmaker and the Switchblade have a match, it's gold. But in this particular instance, Jay White retains, and this match gets another 5 out of 5. Yeah! And then the main event for the interim AEW World Championship, because Punk is injured and he's not really interested in the title, they're just doing an interim until he comes back, and then they'll have their official title match. However, it did lead to a match we've been waiting for for years, as John Moxley challenged Hiroshi Tanahashi. Three years we've been waiting for this match, and it didn't disappoint. Just crazy and brutal, and still kept us entertained, despite the fact that, honestly, before this match started, I was like, how are you going to follow this entire night? I was kind of drained with all the exciting matches that had happened this night, but they didn't disappoint. 
And even again with this one, a fantastic ending. As Hiroshi Tanahashi got a sling blade on John Moxley, but it didn't put John Moxley out. He kept himself going enough to get a paradigm shift on Tanahashi and the win, becoming the AEW World Interim Heavyweight Champion. I know some people would go like, that makes him a two-time champion. He's not officially the champion yet, so we'll see how that goes. We haven't seen John Moxley versus CM Punk since John Moxley was Dean Ambrose, and it's only gotten better since then, so I can't wait for that match. But as far as this one, ends the night on a 4 out of 5. <coughs> I shouldn't say ends, though, because right after this, of course, the Jericho Appreciation Society came out after Moxley, who's in the Blackpool Combat Club, which led to all of the other Combat Club guys coming out. And, of course, Eddie Kingston, Santana and Ortiz, because they're about to have their big match at Blood and Guts. But, of course, it was cool to have... The newest member of the Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio Castagnoli, come out. And, of course, Eddie Kingston flip him off and leave because they've still got their heat going. But either way, it was a great drama-filled way to end the night. So AEW X NJPW Forbidden Door overall was such a great pay-per-view. It was so fantastic. By the time this was over, I was so drained because of all the excitement. It was so good. AEW puts on great pay-per-views, New Japan puts on great pay-per-views, so for them to get together and put one on, it had to be fantastic, and it lived up to how fantastic I expected it to be. Every match was either a 4 or a 5, except for one, which was a 3, which was not a 3 for any lack of great wrestling in the match itself, just like I said, the build-up and the storyline not being all that great, but still a great match. Like, giving it a 3 hurt a little bit, I was just like, it doesn't quite deserve a 4, but it was very close. Honestly, this pay-per-view is probably one of the best pay-per-views I've seen in the last few years. It was so freaking good. So if you haven't seen it, there's still replays going. I highly recommend you go check it out. Because I would give this pay-per-view a 5 out of 5. Yeah! So there you have it. That's my wrestling review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed AEW, New Japan Pro Wrestling's Forbidden Door. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notifications when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Forbidden Door. Love you guys.